Hey everyone, John here. Welcome back to Topo Talk. I was looking at my iPad the other night because I like to, uh, you know, watch the iPad in the evening after work. And I've got this janky old iPad cover. And I was looking at the button on the top. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's got quite a nice curvature there. And the button sort of, you know, it's cut into that curvature. And I wanted to explore the data transfer modifier a little bit and see how that was, uh, you know, how I could integrate that into my workflow. So I just uh, quickly set up this, this model here and I was pretty impressed with the results. I haven't, I've known of the data transfer modifier for quite a while, but I've never actually found a good enough tutorial to explain how to use it. And I recently did, and I'll link to that tutorial in the description, but I was pretty impressed with the results. As you can see here, if I just hide the wireframe, um, I'm just going to turn off this button just for a second and just turn off the data transfer modifier. So that's what I've got. And I mean, this is sub D modeled. It's quite clean. Um, but invariably, when you're cutting into surfaces like this, you're just pushing, you know, verts around and you can, you know, you can just add little uh, imperfections and some shading errors, right? I mean, it doesn't look too bad from a distance. It's not too bad at all. But I was pleasantly surprised when I turned on the data transfer modifier using a version of this as a target that doesn't have the hole cut into it, the original version. And let me just turn that back on. And you can see how clean that becomes. It's a really nice result. Let me just turn that on and off again. And it appears to be sort of modifying the geometry, but if we have a look at the geometry, the actual geometry doesn't change, right? So this is just the data transfer, uh, transferring the normal, normal data. And in you know numerous tutorials, I've talked about using shrink wrap to do something like this, but this is the first time I've really explored the data transfer. And from what I've seen, you can use a combination of shrink wrap and data transfer to get the best results. We might explore this again in the future, but for now, what I'd like to do is just quickly recreate this and just walk you through the workflow that I that I did. So. First of all, let's create the case object, and that's using mesh and round cube. You'll have to have your extra 3D objects turned on in your add-ons. And you can see mine's already set up here because I created it before, but I also saved a little uh, preset there as well, operator preset iPad case. Maybe I need something for the future. So what I want to do here is create the target object, then I'm going to uh, duplicate that and create the actual uh, case. So. We'll start off by adding in a few loops here. So I'll just add those and these just to make them nice and square. It's pretty good. Shade smooth. And in my quick objects, my quick menu, quick favorites, I should say, I've got subdivision surface. So bring it up to two and I'll do Shift D to duplicate this, name this one target. Okay, and just turn that off. And we've got this one. So we can get going with this. So select these faces, all the way down to here, and control plus on the numpad to get rid of, that's one too many. So I'll go minus, get rid of those. So I'll delete faces and select this one. And we want to scale on the X, so scale X zero. And this one too, scale X zero. On the actual case, this loop here, this part here is actually sharpened. So I was just, uh, you know, preparing for that. Even though I'm not going to do the whole case, I just thought, um, that would be the approach that I would take if I was doing this. So one thing to note here is that this face here is a little uh, wider than this face here, which is gonna change the shape of the button. So we're gonna have to slide this down, but I don't wanna do that yet. Okay, so let's see. What we'll do though is we will, you can see how there's the, that's the curvature you can see how that's curving away under subdivision surface away from the unsubdivided mesh. Okay, so this is something we have to think about, and this is why we're going to use um, 
possibly a bit of shrink wrap, but we'll also use the data transfer modifier. We'll get this as clean as we can without that. So we'll drag that one out. That's nice and straight. Now, if I drag this one directly out, that's going to push it away. It will keep it straight this way, but it's going to push it away. And obviously we're changing the mesh somewhat. I could do it that way. I could also slide it like that. You can see how that's kind of burying it as well. See, it's no longer straight here. So another reason why you want to have a target object. So you can add that back in or bring that back to its original shape. So I'll just do it like, let's see, maybe I want to do it like that. It's a bit offsetting or disconcerting having it go like that. So I'm just going to bring it out like that. Okay. Maybe a little bit more and possibly just slide that one. So we're already, we're already messing with these verts. So we're going to change the uh, geometry and we're going to change the shading here. Maybe just bring this one back a bit like that. And what we'll do now is we will inset to add in our hole and our button. So about that far. Okay, you can see how that's sort of poking up a little bit there now. It's okay. And grab this and just slide this across a bit to make that a little more even. It's more like it. I don't want to be messing with this one here. Excellent. Could possibly just grab this one and come up to my normals. I can't see. I've got my recording bar in the way. Uh, normal. And, you know, just bring that down a little bit. Okay. So there you go. You can see it's starting to add those little shading areas in there. Right. So now what we can do is go into edge mode and add in a couple of loops. I'll probably just put in, I'm going to do it this way because it's easier than sliding the loops. So I'll just go to there like that. And then I'll just grab this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and get rid of those. Now this is putting loops all the way through the geometry. and we may or may not want to do that depending on what you'd add down here. But um, I think on the back of the, on here, there's actually a hole for the camera. So these would actually, you know, terminate, probably even sharpen the corners of that hole. So I, I generally would leave those for now, not even bother with those until um, I'd moved on to another part. And one thing to note here when we're talking about this hole here is that you can see adding that loop in there has actually sharpened this a little bit. So we're losing some of that curvature, which is not ideal. But if we did have a hole there, then, then you know, we would have to think about how far across our hole went. But you know, if it went, say, that far, we could delete those faces and then we could dissolve that. And that fixes that down here. That's what, that's what I mean about carrying that loop through the model. You have to be really careful what it does to the rest of the model. Obviously, we have to sharpen these as well. And really, with this kind of thing, shrink wrapping is going to be uh, necessary because when you're cutting holes in these sort of curved surfaces, shrink wrapping can be really important. But we're not going to focus on that now. I've done shrink wrapping a lot in other tutorials. I'm just going to undo that for now. And, you know, possibly I could just select all of that and just deselect these I can just get them deselect those and just you know slide it across a bit so that we're you know sharpening in here but we're not messing up the curvature there here's okay because it's on a flat surface but that does go some way towards fixing that problem all right so next what we'll do is we'll think about the hole and the button so I need this to be a button and I need it to be extruded inward. So what I'll do is maybe extrude in first. 
So I go Alt E and extrude along normals, just bring that in to about there. So that's pretty good. And what else do I need to do? I will now use machine tools. You can grab machine tools um, on Blender Market, I think. It's, uh, it used to be free. I think there may be still be a free version, but if you, um, if you drop a couple of bucks, it's definitely worth it. Because I'm going to press 4, and that will create a new object based on that selection. Okay. So that's my button. So what I'll do is I'll name that button. And I'll name this case. Great. And I'm going to hide that for now and just come back to my case. And how's that hole looking? I mean, it's looking fairly round there. It looks pretty even. I think that's pretty good. So you can see how that's sort of pushed up there. I mean, I could actually do a little bit of manual adjustment with this. I could use a shrink wrap, but shrink wrap is not going to be, it's going to bring it back to, uh, you know, with this under subdivision, it'll bring it back to the target shape. But then when I apply the shrink wrap, it's, um, unless I apply the subdivision as well, it's not going to sit exactly where the target sits. So it's not really worth it in this case. So I'm just going to just bring that back there like that. I'm, what I'm trying to do is make this look as good as I can without any extra modifiers, you know, without data transfer or shrink wrap. See how far we can get away with, you know, pushing these verts uh, and not, you know, having to use any modifiers. I'm just looking around the model, see if I can smooth that out. Obviously, this is going to be almost impossible if this is a higher poly count. But, you know, overall, that's looking pretty good. So why don't we just sharpen it? I'm just going to move in a little bit there and select this one and this one. I select all the way around. So I'll control B to bevel and something like that and just make sure the shape is one. And I don't know, that looks pretty good. Sub D, sub D surface modeling is not dead yet. Very nice. So, I, you know, I could make a hole in here if I had to have a hole. Uh, don't, don't have to have one, but if you did, you could just do another inset and then just sort of you know, delete that. And you've got that. Okay. So now we can go back to our button and just grab our button. Still sitting down there. So we want to do, you can see I split it off and the origin still down there. So I'm going to press Control Alt X, origin center of mass, and just bring that. Out, so I want to be on my normal. Well, I'm on my normal. So what I'll do is I'll do it this way. I'll just select it all, just bring it up like that. How's the shape? It's not perfect. It's a little skew because it's still slightly uneven as far as size goes. I'll just bring that back there like that, and then maybe just bring this one back. A little bit. I'm just eyeballing this. All right. So, yeah, it's nicely rounded there like that. And I know on the actual case it's rounded as well. But it's a little big, right? So probably quickest way to do that is just to do an inset. Control I. Delete faces. Just grab outside and I will alt actually I've got my normal so I'm just going to press E and Z just extrude that down and just intersect the geometry I know we made a hole there but just in, if you have a look well, if I have a look at this you can actually see uh, the hole there but for now I'm just going to disregard that Okay, so there's my button. It's fairly rounded like that. If I just select this outer loop and sharpen it, Control B. Nice, that looks pretty good. It's probably a little long. 
you know, I don't necessarily need that long, but you could actually, you know, select both of these objects and then just grab all of these. You know, in X-ray mode, just grab all of this and you could just slide it across. Just to make it a little smaller. So it's not looking too bad. It's a little, a little tight there. So I could just grab that and then just, oops, not do that. Okay, I've got snapping on. Turn that off. Bring that back. You see, there's a little pinchy there. But overall, not too bad, right? It's not absolutely perfect, but it's not too bad. So let's just take a look at what the data transfer modifier will do to this now. So what I'll do is hit three and grab that one plus, 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 because I don't want to use the data transfer modifier on this. Press control I like that. And I'm going to create a vertex group and assign. All right. With that selected now, I will add the vertex, add the data transfer. Modify under edit data transfer or data transfer. And I will choose my target. Good. I will choose my vertex group. And we want face corner data, custom normals, and nearest face interpolated. And you can already see the difference. So let's just roll in there. That's off, that's on. Let's just come up and grab our mat cap. Off, on. Really makes a big difference around here. You can really quite changes the uh, hole quite dramatically. And remember, I'm still just exploring data transfer. Um, I know there's ways you can use multiple uh, uh, vertex groups and, you know, for points and faces, but I'll keep exploring that. And like I said, I'll link um, to the tutorial that I watched for this. Definitely recommend that. So I reckon that's given a pretty good result, right? I think that I'm happy with that and I'll keep exploring it and uh, you know, see how I can start using data transfer in my modeling process. All right, so if you have any questions, um, you can join the Patreon and ask questions and that's via the Discord channel. So if you wanna join the discussion, please join us there. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next Topo Talk.